Oh, hi there. Um, so I'm going to be doing a video um, for um, uh, my GoFundMe page. Um, and I just needed an introduction. So I'm just going to tell you that uh, um, I know it's pretty long, but it's worth it to watch, trust me. Um, and uh, I really hope you'll be able to help prevent as many people who are needing food. And um, this is actually a Girl Scout project, so I'll see if I can follow you know, the link onto all this stuff um, on the funny page if that's even allowed. But um, uh, I just want to say thank you for watching it. Um, I hope you help prevent as ones have a way better life and have a family and have that kids that are not dying and in and out of trash cans. Just, it, it's, it's helpful. It's hard to imagine how um, they feel, but um, maybe you can have a kind of a little bit of how they feel in the video. So thank you for watching. Here we go. What do I think is poverty? Yes. Um, you mean just a, like a dictionary definition? It's your definition. It's a lack of something that people need in order to have a good quality of life. And you worded that perfectly. Okay. So, um, how do people become poor? Circumstances happen. Uh, that can drastically change someone's um, whole life. Yeah, yeah. Um, a natural disaster that destroys their home or maybe where their job is or um, a sickness that causes them to have to quit work or spend all their money or um, because poverty isn't just about money. You can, you can have very little money and you could still be rich in many other ways. You may be poor in money, but you may be rich in friends and um, love for other people and joy in your life. And so, so when we talk about poverty, most people talk about economic poverty. Uh, and I'm assuming that's what you want to talk about. But um, I just want you to remember that some of the richest people I've ever known didn't have any money. <laughs> so, um, what what led up to the uh, Venezuelans not being able to eat? So, 20 years, well, I'll put it this way, it became a crisis over the years. Venezuela, Venezuela has always had a segment of their population that was poor and that fell outside of... Um, the haves, the people who have things. So um, many of those people um, were undocumented um, or uneducated, um, maybe didn't have um, a lot of resources, a lot of uh, ways to make a living. So that was that is something we always saw in Venezuela. But over the last um, 20 years, and then over the last 10 years, it's been much worse, where corruption um, in the government leaders, um, where they were taking money that really rightfully belonged to people of the uh, country, to Venezuelans, um, um, stealing, um, overcharging, taking, um, taking tax money and not using it to help the people. Um, and just policies in the government that didn't help poor people. And it, it made um, some people extremely rich. Then it made some people extremely poor. So uh, what did, what do you think the president did that was kind of involved in with all of this? So the current president, in my opinion, um, was not qualified for the job. 
he didn't have any training. He didn't really understand um, about government and how to manage people. Um, he um, became president because his predecessor, Hugo Chavez, um, he was a friend of his. Dying, and his dying wish was that the country elect Nicolas Maduro to power. And he and Chavez was trying to protect Venezuela from someone who could have been really brutal. And yeah. so that's why he did that. But Nicolas Maduro did not have, um, does not have um, the, the knowledge or the um, experience to um, handle a complex country. And many people have taken advantage of his um, naivete. You know what that means? No. That means, that means kind of um, don't know. He, they, he don't realize what he's doing, what they're doing to him. So they take yeah. advantage of him. And many more people have gotten rich, very rich, by um, manipulating Maduro. Many countries have, and so they've taken their oil, they've taken their gold, they've taken their riches, and the people are poor. And now when they need those countries, those countries aren't there to help them. Right, so um, who do you, whose fault is all of this? Um, it's, there, there's plenty of fault to go in plenty of places, but at the end of the day, I will say the Venezuelans, that the voters, it's so important that people as citizens of any country study the issues, know positions of the candidates, and vote for the best candidate. Um, it, because the Venezuelans voted more than once. Yeah, because uh, I talked to my mom in the car, and I'm like, isn't it kind of their fault because they voted for him? So it, it so, is. Yeah, it yeah. is sort of. I mean, it is. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to say that. But, but, I will say this. They're, they didn't necessarily vote of their free will. There was coercion. Do you know what? Yeah, he, I don't really know what that means. People were pressuring them. So I'll give you an example. Um, they, if you work for a company, and most of those companies now are owned by the government. Yeah. So if you work for a company that the government owns, and they tell you, Bella, you must vote for Maduro. If you do not, you will lose your job. I and vote. they have access to the voting records so they can see who you voted for. So if you if you you're voting to protect your job. So there was corruption in the voting process. So even though Venezuelans you, you have to say they voted for him, they voted for him to protect themselves and that's extremely sad. Mm, losing your job is not that bad cuz there's always other jobs and if no, oh. there's not. Oh. Because the government owns all the jobs now. That's part of the corruption. There's really not much private industry. So, so if you lose your job, you're going to starve. If all the Venezuelans didn't vote for him, because, are you saying that all the Venezuelans, their job would be lost? Not all of them, but a majority of them. They very... The government is very um, authoritarian. Do you know what that word means? Kind of, but uh, yeah. Okay. It means they're they're very hard. They yeah. they make um, they make life really difficult. And um, so if you you can't buy groceries, the food Venezuelan government controls the food supply. All the food comes from the government. So if you can't work. And you can't buy, food, and you can't buy gas for your car, because they own that too. If you don't have access to health care, because they own, so you see, this is what happens when corruption takes over, 
and um, the government took over all the private industry and the private sector. So there's just, you know, education, the government controls children can't go to school. So you, they control you. So this happened over a period of 10 years. So um, there was a time when this could have been stopped by the vote. But people who knew this wasn't right did not vote. The people who could have made this different did not vote. And that was our friends did not vote. When we lived there, we were shocked that our friends did not go and vote against this government before it became this powerful. So there was a time when they could have made a difference and they did it. So it's important that, that citizens are informed and they're part of the process of their government, part of the process of elections and making decisions that make uh, that can, that will affect your life and the life of everybody you know and your society. And if people, good people aren't involved in that process, this is what happens. So, yeah, you know, like, you know, it's, they should stand up. I do believe that they should do that. But um, how can we help people to get out of pro poverty, especially, you know, in Venezuela and start working on their own? Okay. Well, right now, we can support the changes that are trying to be made because the Venezuelan people now are trying to stand up against him. And it's very difficult because they're hungry and they're in really bad shape, but they are. There's, there's a big movement now, so we can support that. How do we support that? By saying we believe in democracy and we believe in a free Venezuela. We believe in the Venezuelan people's a right to determine their own government. The, the president that's now, Maduro, has, is illegally in power. He was voted in legally for a while, but then he began to manipulate the elections till it was not a free election. So this last election last year was not recognized by any major country in the world except um, a few very authoritarian governments that are actually taking advantage of Venezuela, maybe five countries in the world and the other countries, 51 countries, including Singapore, have um, endorsed the, the interim president who, who um, stood uh, before the people and, and used a constitutional provision to say the government is, is illegitimate, the election was illegitimate, and the National Assembly has said they're taking power according to the Constitution. Um, so we can support that. We can uh, ask our congressional representatives, our senators and congressmen, to um, support Venezuela, support and democracy in Venezuela. Uh, we can support the pressure that's being put by many countries on the illegitimate government of Maduro so that he will step down. That's what they're trying to do. The, the, these 51 with economic pressure um, on, on that, so that they will step down and especially the humanitarian aid to come in. People are starving, people are dying. There's no electricity, there's no water. There's hardly any food, there's, there's no medicine, and um, there are trucks on the border at Colombia and at Brazil. There are many, many trucks full of food and medicine and the Venezuelan army, controlled by the president, will not let the trucks come in. So they want to come in and help people, and the Venezuelan government will not let them. Their people are starving, and they will not let trucks come in to help their people. So we can, we can support um, and advocate. Do you know what advocate means? No. <laughs> okay. Advocate means I'm going to stand up from somebody and I'm going to protect you and I'm going to defend you. I'm going to say, Mama, don't you spank Bella. 
don't don't spank Bella. She didn't deserve that. She didn't really, you know, she needs that different. That's advocating. The same word is for a lawyer. It's what a lawyer does. He defends you before someone else. So we can we can ask our our government to defend a Venezuelan freedom. And ensure that those trucks can get in with humanitarian aid, with food and, and uh, clothing and um, all that they need so that they can reestablish their life. And then we can pray because this is a big problem, but it's not too big for God. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely that, but like, you know, how I asked you the, um, how I asked you how, um, what we can do to uh, yeah. help people, right? Um, what are you doing to help the Venezuelans? So all, I'm doing those things that I just said, and also I send money to a friend of mine in Valencia that is the director of the first medical clinic that I started there in a church. Yeah. And that clinic is still operating, but they don't have money. They can see patients, but they don't have money for medicine. So I send her money every month and she has a friend who owns a pharmacy able to get a few medicines that we can purchase um, and we purchase um, milk for babies and uh, vitamins for babies because their babies are very malnourished so that's so I don't really have any questions left but no uh, do you want to say anything else to you know, the people who are watching this? Proud of you for doing this. I'm very proud of you that you're thinking about these things. It's important that you do that. When those of us who have been blessed to have good parents, good schools, uh, opportunities to learn, opportunities to become leaders, we have a responsibility with that. Those blessings come with responsibility. And that is to help those who have not had those opportunities. And so I see you becoming that kind of woman, and it makes me extremely proud. Yeah, okay. So I know you're doing this about me, but there's also other people who are going to be watching this. And if so, I'm so, doing a GoFundMe um, to help save money. I'm doing like a fundraiser. Um, and I'm also. I, I might be having some videos and some stuff to show them, so... Okay. Like, what do you, what do you want to tell them to, you know, if they can do it, like oh. a small thing, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can say that many Venezuelans desperately need your help. Um, their children and their parents eating out of garbage cans, and there are babies uh, and children that are starving to death has now been cut off for over three weeks and people uh, that are on ventilators in hospitals have died because they don't have electricity. They can't do surgery unless they do it with flashlights. They need help. Please help. Everybody can do something. If everybody would do a little something, it would make a difference. I love that because I'm doing an exhibition project at school. And you know, even with climate change, the little things help. It's Right. Little, little, Pick like, up your trash. Pick up your trash. Like recycling is helping with, you know, right. a lot of things, including climate change. Right. We have like 12 years until we run out of all, like, I think all the fishes in the ocean, something like that. And it's like, we're going to need a lot more food. It's it's right. massive. The, right. Uh, I, yeah. But everybody can do something. If you walk down the street and you see a piece of trash, pick it up. You may not have thrown it down. It doesn't matter. Pick it up. Yeah, my mom always tells me, you know, if my brother makes a mess in my room, I still clean it up, even though it's my brother's, so I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's because it's your house. Yeah. And, yeah. And so the, wor the earth is our house. We live we in it. We can't wait for somebody else to do it because it's ours like everybody they keep you know i think nicholas Mar he probably just wants it for the money but that's the thing he loves the power he loves the power and the oh. money 
it, you need to look at a picture of him. If you haven't Googled him, look at the Christmas picture of him and his wife and his dog, and he's fat. Even his dog is fat. And his people are eating out of garbage cans, and they're drinking sewer water out of the street. And he is fat and feeding his dog. I don't know. It's your interview. I know it's my interview. I just <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have anything to say. Then you can say. No, I'm done. Okay. Not let's so, have another question. I'm gonna thank you because you thought about You're, this, um, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, Lynch. For, <laughs> you're welcome. For, uh, doing this with me. So, uh, whoa, whoa, bye. Cause my other camera just went on. So funny because, well, parts of it, not the whole thing. Just parts of it, are like, you know, quotes or like, parts that I think I can put on it. And, oh uh, my gosh, how you tell that to a Venezuelan just like uh, in the moment? So I couldn't put all my makeup, uh, you know, that, oh my gosh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> So how, how we do to so to be able to have both faces? I don't know. We have to be like this. <laughs> yeah, okay. maybe we can do one. You want to do one at a time? Maybe yeah. Just <clears throat> First you and then him. So when I okay. ask you a question, Wanna? then I'm gonna okay. ask you, and then you switch the thing to him. Right? Is it is it recording now? Yeah, we're recording. Well, uh, hi. Okay. <laughs> so and. I feel bad saying that. Um, what is what is poverty? Well, for me, poverty is when somebody don't have the resources to uh, be able to get the basic needs covered, like food or housing, health. If somebody doesn't have the resources, uh, don't have to be monetary, but is a person may um, go to the hospital and there is no opportunity for that person to get that service, that for me is poverty. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, for him now? Okay. Yes. Do we get, each get a turn with the question? Yes, what, <laughs> what is poverty? Um, what she said. Um, I, in addition to resources, um, or lack thereof. Um, it could also be lack of opportunities for, you know, being in education. I see at poverty impacting students' access to learning and good schools. Um, um, so that, yeah. that could be an, an issue. For, but um, I think poverty is just, just not having access to, you know, not just basic needs, but just opportunities. Whether it's education, it could be um, employment as well. You worded that perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, second question is, uh, how do people become poor? Okay, probably doesn't have the um, opportunity to put the function their skills. For example, if somebody doesn't get the opportunity to get out a job, and there are several reasons for that, can be, well, I'm looking with a person with a different profiles in some areas, uh, somebody can say, you know, I'm not going to hire a woman because it's that woman have kids, so it's not, uh, the kid gets sick. Uh, so the person is not going to be in the office as frequent as I want. So that person doesn't have the opportunity to show what they can do. So um, that can be a reason for a person to get poor. Um, another thing, sometimes uh, health issues, a person have a job and get sick and the company or the country instead of supply for that person to to have the treatment, the person has to leave their job, 
sell their house and so that reason a person to and not able to supply their their needs um also time the policies in the country uh, close that opportunity for that person to have the access or the resources and another reason that a person can uh, classify as poor because cannot eat the the basic That was actually. Yeah, she's better at this than I'm. Um, um, I want to add that, you know, sometimes people the like who make below a certain amount of money are qualified, um, like you know, making beneath um, a, what the government says in terms of income, but um, that isn't. You know, we've seen families that actually might make more than that. Um, well, like middle class have experienced some uh, examples of poverty. Like, so. But to your question, people that become poor, um, we deal with this a lot here. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions that poverty is a choice. Now, certainly people can make bad choices or poor choices. But the, those, and we work with uh, students in poverty a lot and their families, many, many of them are born into poverty. And we were just talking about today that a lot of students don't even know that they're poverty. They, all that their world they've experienced is being around people like them. Um, and many of our students don't leave Las Cruces and never been out of our town. Um, so, you know, lack of education, uh, lack of opportunities can lead to becoming poor, certainly. Um, but as Rick I was saying, it's often systemic and uh, sometimes, you know, not always the individual's fault. didn't know that um, some people that when they're poor they actually don't know that they're poor that I, I thought they knew that so like you're saying they since they're in an environment where everybody else is poor they don't really know the word poverty. it just yeah. seems normal like your nanny tells remembers she didn't even know she was poor when she was little it wasn't till she got out of you know where she grew up and saw met people with different with more money than her that she realized that that's what she was experiencing. Was, so. was it like a sad time for you? When she realized well, that? poor doesn't always mean sad. Um, I've met, and ironically, some of the most happy people I've ever met have been people that would we would consider poor. Um, they were. They were rich in a lot of other things. That's exactly what they, Nani said. Yeah. That 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 uh that um, people are can be rich with money, or they can be rich with mm -hmm. friends, or. Yeah, and I've met a lot of rich people who are very poor in a in a lot of ways too. So, doesn't make it right and doesn't make it fair, but that's the that's the the complexity of it. Yeah, it's weird that way. Cause it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah. anyway. Well, and then you're learning about this, oh, yeah. and it's good to get different people's opinions too. On it, yeah. That's why I'm asking three people, two people all once. So. <laughs> uh, is this the camera? Switch. <laughs> okay. I'm here. <laughs> ah, okay. So, what led up to the Spanish slums not being able to eat? There are a lot of factors, and corruption is one, uh, giving a lot of power to one political group is another thing. Um, the other is relying in just one 
uh, main income uh, for the Venezuelan people. We um, always thought that we were a rich country because we have oil, but never appreciated the other things that we had and we didn't cultivate them. Like there are countries that don't have like minerals, gold, oil, and the people is really well. And when you ask what is different, so the I'm going to give you an example for ex, uh, an, an area in Spain, Las Canarias, they just live from tourism. They don't have resource but the beauty of their country and they have attract people that spend money there and so they need factories and sellers and they make in that way the income for the country and Venezuela people forgot about that and just like in the oil everything was around petroleum and corruption and um, policies that were not right may uh, really hard uh, economical situation. So now we don't have factories and any other type of factories. Uh, and that's the way of employment for people and if people cannot work, so they cannot um, be able to supply the needs and because people in power have a still money. So now we have good hospitals, a school, transportation. So just blaming in one thing uh, is very difficult because there are several aspects for that. And this is yeah. something that didn't happen from, from night to day. Is something that we have been living for more than 40 years, and time is worse and worse. Yeah, because I, I know like this question is kind of hard to answer because there's a lot of answers. Like Nani actually explained how it, it, it was also their fault that they choose to vote for him, even though it technically was a bit, you know, um, how do I say this? Like, uh, like she said. They, um, it's like if your boss asks you vote for this president or you get fired, they chose vote for the president over. Yeah, and that has been happening since I was a little kid. There is nothing new, but every time is getting worse. I remember having teachers that if you didn't vote for that, for the a friend of the president that was in power, the teacher will lose their job. So some yeah, people yeah. think, oh, this is something new, but, and you will ask, and where is that person that they moved to school? And the reason was the person was fired because they didn't vote for, for the candidate that was the friend of the president. So, um, is that that I see the years go goes by and people don't learn and people don't do these things better. Yeah, I mean, I want you to be, be honest on this question. So, pretend I'm your boss. I know I don't look like mm -hmm. one because I have this, this boy, you know, just random. I'm a kid and <laughs> you are just from a tech company, no problem. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. All okay. the time. So and you have a really good job. You're like uh you're like right below me. Like you're like the second in place. Mm -hmm. And I told you either you vote for Nicholas Marudo, did I say that correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you get fired. What would you choose? Okay, because I don't have kids and I have education, I can say, well, I don't like this guy and um, I think he's doing the things wrong and I'm not going to vote for him. But I think I will give you a different answer if I have kids who I have to feed and I will don't have a lot of education and I will be afraid that if I lose my job, 
I'm not going to apply yeah. has a way to Yeah, because it's a really good job and you know some people there have really good jobs and it's gone. It's yes. So I cannot blame uh some people and um, even them think they are doing the wrong thing because I'm not in their shoes. And um, and some people have to do what have to do. I hope that uh a, a way to get rid of him and who can see that there are more opportunities than just what is in front of them yeah so uh do you think that they will um do you think that like when his in the next years that are passing and there's a time to vote again mm-hmm do you think they'll vote for Nicolas Maduro or whatever's next in line? Because they might still have that problem with the job. And so. Yeah, so one of the things, the people don't want to go to vote because the people that is in um, counting the votes are friends with Nicolas Maduro. Okay? So people are thinking, like, I going to vote and anyway they can cheat on that so the first thing to have a difference is that people who is counting those votes will be independent so people can really say and they know what their vote is going to count yeah, fair yeah. yeah so that will be a fair and legal election so I think mm -hmm. we will see the truth of people if they really are going to express what they want and and i think that would be something wonderful for them uh know that their voices are are being can you um tell me mm -hmm. yes they must just say switch <laughs> yep switch can you repeat the question please yes so it's not on here i, I was just making he up he hasn't answered questions. the question you wrote though he hasn't given us a this one he hasn't answered that one. oh you haven't okay what led up to the Venezuelans not being able to eat? Um, uh, you've already mentioned this. Probably it's a combination of things, but if I could just point to one overarching reason, it would have to be corruption. I mean, it's and it's not only Venezuela. There's a lot of, even the U.S., lots of corruption. But at the high governmental level, but you also see corruption in lower, you know, and amongst the people too but you know yeah you know that's what i think so yeah so th this is one of the questions i also asked her that is not on the paper but hmm. i always like to do that um <laughs> just throw out the script bella go off script um so what like so pretend i'm your boss again i don't look like your boss Imagine you, you are my boss. Soon. You're the boss. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Just admit it. <laughs> Stop denying your true self. Yes, I am the boss of you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, I am your boss of a CEO company. What does CEO mean? I just heard that. Chief Executive Officer, I guess. But oh, you're the, it means the I'm boss. the CEO. <laughs> you're the CEO. I'm the boss of the CEO. No, the CEO is the boss. Oh, the CEO is the boss. I, I'm the CEO. You are, like, next in line. What's after CEO? Vice President. You're, like, Vice President, okay? So my mom said it's after you. <laughs> but she's the boss. I don't want to be on She's the boss of you. You gotta cut that off. <laughs> she's the boss of you. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, she's the boss of me. Uh, she's the president. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's the dictator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, back on track. Yeah, yeah. So in order of editing, you can edit this <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will do this. Um, oh, I mean, maybe I might. Yeah, I might. Uh, you're my boss, and now what? <laughs> so, um, and I ask you. Vote for Nicolas Maduro, I hope I said that right, or you get fired. 
What would you choose? And you have kids. You take care of. Oh, my kids. Oh, uh, yeah, I do have kids. Yeah. So. I don't know. It'd be, it would be diff okay. very difficult. Um, yeah. It would, I'm not sure what I'd do at that point. Because, I have, you know, I have a family and kids to make. And I don't think I would. I think I would do what a lot of people did, just to make I sure there was food on the table. Yes, <laughs> I'm giving you my answer. <laughs> what is that, like, Luke, I'm your father kind of thing? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I would, probably, I would probably vote for him if it meant my kids were going to starve and my, I was going to lose our home. Well, probably. No, you're all going to starve. Now, you're just not making your family starve, you're making everybody else starve. Because we're all going to make yeah. them either. But they didn't know that, didn't they? Some people didn't know that. No. Like, no. Oh, and that. Exactly. So, and they probably still don't know that. To some some of them. No matter what, they're just, either way, they're going to, they don't really have to either way, they're going to be Because... Starved. He's telling them that it's the U.S.'s fault and the sanctions, and it's not his fault. So that's the messaging that they're choosing or to only have access to, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, what I think is so wrong about Nicholas Maduro is Lenny uh, told, uh, told me to look at this. I haven't looked it up yet. But I just think this is wrong. On his Christmas photo, he was fat and his dog. His dog was fat too. Like, uh, at least give the your dog. You choose your dog over your country and yourself. Like they're so you're like big and fat, and then they're like skinny dying. That is wrong. That is really wrong. Hmm. At least they could show him from the neck up. Yeah, because you know. It's, hmm. So you you can't. He wants to make people. He wants to be all powerful. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> it's a family joke, kind of. <laughs> Where's your script? You're back on the script. Yes. Give me a script thing again. Okay. Switch. Yes. I love. I love like. The word scripts. And, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, what did the president? What did the president do? What What was his fault? Oh my gosh! First, don't have even a plan when he came to power. He, I know that some people have a street education, but he didn't have any type of skills to be a president to begin with. It's like a doctor. That he said that he watched a lot of uh, ER, ER um, uh, episode, and now he can be a doctor. So he didn't have any education. Or I'm gonna kill some people. Like that. That. Yeah. Um, what else he did wrong? Um, allow allow the the corruption continue as bad as uh, it was. Second, lie to the people. Don't tell um, people about the truth about what's happening or saying things that he knew that were not true. And be part of the problem instead of finding solutions. Yeah. So now he is in so big trouble that even he cannot escape and move to another place because he now he's going to be in jail. So the only option that he has now is to stay there and he's going to do whatever he wants. To yeah. Stay. So I, I like what you said because um I, I yeah, you're basically saying it's it's the the president because Right? Right, okay. I just make sure I got it right. But I also think that, well, I lost my train of thought. Wait, um, 
I know, but I have a really good touch screen. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna cut this out. I hope. <laughs> um, so, well, I'm just gonna show my screen. So what I said that he didn't have education, he was a liar, he allowed corruption, and now he's like in jail in Venezuela because he, ha he did so many bad things that now he's going to be able to move to another place. So he has to in stay jail? there. Yeah, because he has done so many bad things against people that he's going to be in jail. So if he moves to another place, we have like um, international organizations that are going to judge him and he know he's going to be guilty. So yeah. if he leaves his house, he will be put in jail. And, and he will be president. <laughs> he will be the president. Well, uh, no. well that's when you were asking about progress. One of the problems we have is there is no from the other parties people that really the Venezuelan trumps. Yeah. It's like I don't it's, have a enemy. <laughs> it's like I, I think I remember this in the Batman movie. I don't know why I'm relating this to the Batman movie. But one, all the superheroes got in jail, and he's so sad because he mm -hmm. had no villain to fight. I, I, I don't think that has yeah. anything to do with this, but <laughs> no, no, you are right. They were in jail, so you cannot vote for him. And there is right now a guy that has done very good things, but a few weeks ago, he was um, in a place and he was with people that Venezuela don't want and was like a, oh probably he's going to be bad too so people was really excited about him and now for these bad friends people is like a losing hope and he has to be careful what type of friend he's going to get because people is tired of receiving lies and people just wanted to be president to become rich so he really has to be careful for people to trust him. Yeah. Um. Uh, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, your boss. <laughs> my boss. My boss. I'm, I'm your boss. So those are like technically two bosses. Your boss. <laughs> oh my so, god. Yeah. So she is the boss. Chain of, of the command. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> She's the boss of the boss of the not boss. Yeah, because he is the boss here. <laughs> my dad just said Coco's the boss. Oh, yeah, I can. I believe that. <laughs> like, Chloe Coco. is the boss of the family sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying to get my dog. Oh, here. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, Do dogs have any questions? <laughs> Coco doesn't have any questions. Do dogs eat in Venezuela? Put your no, tongue back. Marina, Coco, <laughs> answer, answer them. Put your tongue back. <laughs> Does he have any questions? His color is so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Okay, next question. Tell us. Well, this is not from the paper. Oh, no, it's for your... It's for... I made him. Okay. I'll read that. Mm. Okay. Uh, whose fault is it? Oh. Well... It's easy to point fingers at the president because they're the one in the seat, but we all have all the people who voted for him, and even those who didn't share some of the blame. So I don't think you can blame anyone. There were some person. people who didn't vote. Uh, why am I getting so much brain farts? Okay. You haven't had your coffee yet. No, what? No. No, I haven't had my tea. I don't drink coffee. I I'm, I'm the Pharisee person. You hold your pinky like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who cares about brain farts? Uh, let's read the script. Focus, Bill. Focus. 
You don't have questions there. <laughs> How can people get out of poverty, especially when they swap? Oh, I remember my question. Um, that I was going to tell them to switch the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember. Tell, so, me, tell me your question. I, I know you said, uh, like, that, that he's not being part of the solution. I, I like the that we're also part of the conflict, but we can also be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. I love that quote. I was gonna, I was just gonna say that because, like, you know, conflict, solution, opposite, but we can still be bigger and better. Mm. So, so, yeah, and, and, and people make mistakes. Yeah. So what if what? Let me ask you this: What if people just decide to do nothing? Which part are they? Part of the problem or part of the solution? Oh, I want I want to refer this back to uh, bullying, because there's three types of people: the the person who's bullying, the the victim, and the people who are watching. The bystander. The bystanders, and the bystanders don't always tell the teacher. They mm -hmm. that's not good. That's not bad. I would say that's more bad than good because they do have the choice to stand up for the victim. That's basically what's happening. So, Nicholas Maluto is bully. Those yes. who are watching so is the Trump. bully. And, okay, thanks, Trevor. I'm gonna have to cut all the Trump stuff out because, you know, not everybody adds your feelings. And when, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But, uh, <laughs> so, are you being part of the solution of the problem because you don't want to talk about it? Oh, no. I mean, Sorry. I'm being part of the solution. Like, we can <laughs> all be, we've been, we, actually, we are the bystanders. We're watching all this. We're not doing anything. And we got to go. We got to tell the teacher hmm. that Nicholas Manudo is bullying them. Who's the teacher, you mm -hmm. might ask? I have no idea. I, I mean, by help, I, I, I mean, by help. Doesn't helping, care but. or don't know? Going to we're bystanders, and but we're good bystanders because the, we're the teacher's class pet. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you know what I mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> because we have the advantage because mm. we we're not poor, so we can give. I am. You are. I know you are. I'm talking to the people who are watching this. <laughs> Kim, give to GoFundMe. <laughs> TM. <sighs> yeah, that's my so something else, Bella, that we can help you with? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I think we have one more left, right? Two more questions. Wow. Oh, you, you, you have you have the you have the uh, questions, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I printed out the link. Uh, print it out. Thank you for that. Thank the boss, boss. Okay. How can we help people? I think I already asked that question. Art, what no. are you? Yeah, we did. No, ask it again. How can we get people? How can we? help people get out of poverty, especially themselves. Well, I mean, really, Roma knows. Ask my mom. Uh, come back. Then you Mocosa. <laughs> we'll cut this out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having allergies right now, and I'm sick in a lot of different ways, but I'm still doing this. Mocosa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore, oh, uh, it's the worst. Dust mites. I have the worst in my family. You got dust mites in your nose? Like what? <laughs> you are so beautiful, Bella. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm so proud of you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. That shows what a big car you have. I'm cutting that out. I'm well, does not matter. I wish, I, I, wish my, <laughs> I wish my high school students would pay attention to this stuff too. You know, show them I'm this. Proud <laughs> your auntie, 
Show them this. <laughs> Actually, I will be building <laughs> this. You can show your high school students. High school students? I'm a fifth grader. <laughs> yep. Hey. I'm See? telling you. No, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm okay. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so how can we help people? Well, I, I can tell yeah. the things I'm doing with my family. I'm praying for them every week and sending them messages of encouragement because they are so tired of what is happening. They feel hopeless right now. And I think if somebody can tell them that they still there is hope, uh, it's going to make their days better and probably help them to take better decisions. Uh, something else that I'm doing is uh, helping organizations and my family with uh, resources. Sometimes I'll be buying medicine for them because even if we send money, sometimes they are not going to find the medicine. So we are buying medicine to send or any product that they don't have there and uh, spreading the word about what is happening in Venezuela yeah because we are as a Venezuelan we are causing a lot of problems for other countries too um, because we are leaving so many people at the same time and other countries now are hating and killing Venezuelans. They don't want them in their countries. So I think is we use our communication media to, to be able to talk about who they are and what, what is happening, I think will be a, a way to help them. Yeah said that really well and uh yeah i mean i mean you don't have to really just spend all the money right i know i'm, I'm asking for money for the gofundme but even if like you know sometimes my family's on the budget for other reasons Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you might be doing too, and all, you can uh, you can like give us a card for people who are watching. You can just like, and we can send it to them. Just like encouragement, it doesn't have to be like you know. It, encourage it, it really helps. It does it, it does a lot. Trust me, it it doesn't have to be medicine, but at least you can encourage them and be like you know just go at it. That's part of being a solution to make life. Yeah. And listen to them, you know, sometimes when people have trouble, uh, they don't want to talk with the people in their houses because if you are the father, you don't want your kid to know how you are feeling because they are going to be more afraid of what is happening. So yeah. I give them the opportunity to tell me those things so they can make catharsis with me <laughs> instead of uh, their kids to see them uh, afraid, tired, angry because people express um, their fears in many ways. And so sometimes you can see the parents are just uh, very angry and it's not because of any person around them, but it's because of the situation. So I try to listen to them and tell them that I'm there for them and how we can find solutions together. Yeah. yeah, I think that was that was really good. Yeah, um, it, I I really agree on solution. There can be many ways, many many ways. Um, but you don't want to be part of the bystanders. That, I mean, if you're really busy, I get it. But there's always five minutes you can take whether before you're going to bed, just five minutes to write a letter, and next time you see us, you can just give it to us. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it 
it's like, there's no such thing as adults have time. It's like if a bystander said, um, well, I didn't remember. Or it's not my fault. Yeah, I didn't do that. Or it doesn't affect me. Yeah. So why should do anything? Or I'm afraid to. That, that's, a, that, that's a lot of... Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be afraid. You're helping other people. I mean, I, I'm just going to put this on a whole other topic. But there's a lot of stuff that's happening around this world. Uh, I'm working on climate change in my school. Oh. Exhibition. Yes. Yes. It's the worst. We have like 12 years until all the fish in the ocean, I think, is going to get wiped out. Like, the, I've heard this from well. WWF World Wildlife Fund, and I did. It's just. Last time? Last time that was in Venezuela, Bella, the the beach that your mom loves so much, uh, uh, Parque Nacional Morrocoy has beautiful islands. I was going inside the beach, and it used to be like a deep sand, and I began to find like little rocks. You couldn't even and, walk. And I was like asking that. my brother, are we in the wrong spot? And he <sighs> said, no, if the coral are dying. And while you are yeah. stepping mm -hmm. in the coral in the ocean, and we has been trying to keep the beaches clean and people this, but but it's not just one person or one place. The water is getting warmer and warmer, and the corals are dying. And I felt so sad because that was like my favorite place Have in you heard all of the world. <laughs> she, had, my mom hasn't heard of it. She's she's it's so okay. sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was really sad and afraid. Like, uh, I mean, what is I, I mean, Venezuela, yeah, they're doing that. But I, I, when you said pollution, I'm like. Pollution? No, I mean, Have not you pollution. seen that? You, you said um, they were making oil. And I'm like. Uh huh. No. Yeah. Stop. Um, building Stop. and building. Yeah. Um, no no regulation for companies. You know, bef we are killing the Amazonas because of the gold, and that is like uh, the lungs of the world. So, yeah. have you seen that uh, Greta Thunberg, the 15 year old Swedish girl? Yes, I yes, I've seen her. Yes, yes, I've seen her. Yeah, I know, I know. From uh, Ted Ed, yeah. Okay. And I, 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 um, there's this thing called BTN, which is amazing, uh, since I go to the school of gems. Of that, I mean, the people who are watching, not you guys, but the people who are watching. Basically, uh, it's the school I go to, and there's this thing called BTN. It's a kids' mm -hmm. news network, news network, and she was on there doing a l protests, and they were mm -hmm. skipping school. And some people, why are we doing climate change right now? <laughs> we're talking about this. Well, it affects poverty. Oh, uh, right. It affects, it affects yeah. poverty. Yeah, it does. But did you know it was a global student walkout? Not a, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. This this one girl, she sat alone for like a week and did a, a hunger strike, and that led to students in her home country like doing a walkout all over Sweden. And just a, I'm not even a month ago, it was a global student walkout, like kids, students all over the globe. So look what how she influenced a global movement. I mean, you know, it's like when there was the gun what? shooting in the school. Remember that? Mm -hmm. that Parkland and all those shootings. It's sad. But the yeah. same, those kids from Parkland, they cr they created a national student movement for a against anti um, school violence. I feel bad because if my friend died, I wouldn't know what to say. Like I would have been. It was really sad. And it's the same thing's happening with Venezuela. Their family's dying. The, the kids are not being able to be born because there's no electricity. Their mother's mother are taking all of it. The babies can't be born without just a little light so they can see. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, it's, it's a big problem. But we do have another question. <laughs> Who's it? Who's well, turn I, is I, it? I think My turn first. Did I do or this? Are, are you doing anything about the time? Yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, oh she didn't ask for it. 
Yeah, the last one. Yeah, the last one. Okay. Uh, the, uh, what are you doing? Anything? Oh. To, oh, remember you went and miss you for this. this oh yeah. Thing. All right. So, well, we are doing stuff together. We're sending money each month to, to Raquel's parents and gra grandma and grandmother and grandmother um, each month. But um, I've had a, a couple of invitations. I only was able to go to one. Um, there was a discussion here on campus about the situation. And so I was invited to kind of give perspective. Um, but, you know, I think the main thing that Ra and Raquel mentioned it, we just try, you know, prayer and then we try to stay in contact with our family and friends and just, you know, be a listening ear and let them know we're here, that we're praying for them. And then we're, you know, we're here to help them. And I'm trying to raise money to help my, um, send to my, our friend Victor there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to try to do that too. It's just, even if we had, you know, even having money, even if we had like, you know, it's difficult just to get access to money too. So. And those people, if there's any people who think Nicholas Maduro is like just fine and normal, no. Be like, yes, he's taking all the food and you're like, well, there's more. People who are watching, <laughs> there's more. Yes, he is. I don't, yes, he is. Yeah, I think it. You know, he's uh, we've not heard of letting people. There's like trucks with a lot of eggs and like food, and then they're right, bringing it to the poor people, and he's not letting them. Mm -hmm. It's a way of controlling people. Yeah, they, they it's drove pretty all messed that up. Way. It's pretty messed up. We can mail though. That is something we can do. Nick's Monroe can't punch their. Do they? They don't even have a house. So I was about to say mailbox, but you know. <laughs> do they have one? Do they have a house? Who? The the Who? Venezuelans. Do they have a mail? Yeah, a lot of people have houses. They just don't. I mean, have electricity right now, or water is sometimes cut and off you too. Can, you you so. We can give the mail to those people. Uh, is mm. so for their GoFundMe. Yeah, we we so, tend to send boxes. To yeah, but we try to look for organizations that have a way to bring the things, the goods to the people. Uh, so doesn't get robbed in the way there. So. We have organization like where Christy um, is sending uh, to Venezuela and in Shuban International Organization, uh, the Red Cross will be a good one that is allowed to bring things inside the country. Yeah, so is that it? That's the last question. You have, oh yeah. What are you doing? What are the Oh, you answered, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. You can rewind the tape. Can we have some questions for you? The first one is too hard to, to um, answer it. Why you are so cute? <laughs> the second question, are you really your mother's daughter? I still have those doubts, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm related um, to a genetic. Oh, this is the genetic. <laughs> yes, I got it. I got it. <laughs> uh, Bella, um, my niece. Speaking of genetic, can you do this? Yeah. I can. Uh, no. <laughs> um, Bella, I'm my hiding. niece. In the other side of the family, want to help hmm? with this project. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what? If what thing would you like them to do for you? Uh, one is six years old, the other is eleven, yeah. and the other is seventeen. So, the one's eleven. They, yeah, just like you. 
Was she the alien one? The one that was like, I'm an alien? No, the alien is the six years old. <laughs> She uh, says she is. Oh yeah, and she that was funny. It. Oh my god, <laughs> that that she she draws the scene. <laughs> and the eleven year old believed it that she was an alien. Oh yeah, yeah she, she 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 was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say again? How did she say it? I began to say crazy things and make faces when the was with <laughs> her by they were together in the room by herself. So the other I'm an one, alien. She, yeah, the other didn't know is to believe or no. I probably she was tired and this. I'm 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 being really cringy right now. I'm very sorry. <laughs> People who are watching are probably cringing by this whole thing. No, you're gonna have to edit this out. Yeah. For sure. For okay, so so what are specific things? And uh, they are going to try to do their best because sometimes they don't have water, they don't have electricity, they don't have their phone working. So they are going to try to do their best so, to help you. Do you want Do you want to interview them now? No, at, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or they, they, they have can. a laptop. Yeah, they do, but you know. Um, maybe your boss can translate. The problem yeah, is to for them to have electricity in the moment. Yeah, so it'll. We can, can schedule it with them and. Just do the video. Just do the video. Them. Send them a and yeah, send the questions and we. You they are, can pre-record. Because I sent you do the video, so they can just do the video, and then. Well. So, pero can be like uh, probably two questions, so will be easier for them. Uh, mm -hmm. not that many uh, so they can they can do something for you faster because the other thing is I want you to have the time to edit and, and fix that's a lot of work yeah so we go where is you this this uh, assignment when is your assignment due April 30th. Okay, so you okay. have some time. Okay, what I, we don't want is to give you the last moment and you will be in trouble because of them or, or don't have everything in the way that you want. I mean, so you're going to put you you're going to put this time video time. on your YouTube on your GoFundMe? But I want it probably next week. Like it's April 30th, but I probably want this next week. Okay. Okay. Split screen break and Okay, yeah. so uh, give me the two questions that you think that depending the different ages will be easy for them to answer. Because the little one is, is just in kindergarten, but they, she can ask something to their peers. Maybe or how does she feel living like this? Would that be a good question for you? Or can be something like... Uh, if something has changed for her, why do you think we don't have electricity or, mm. I don't know. She can answer that. She's <laughs> smart. Oh, Even yeah, I can't. she is. She's scary smart. <laughs> she's scared. The old one say, Kia, she's scary smart. <laughs> the oldest one. <laughs> the 17 years old say that about her sister. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, are happy to to help you and they are happy that people in other countries are taking interest mm -hmm. in what is happening to them so yep. thank you so much how can we help yeah. Venezuelan people that's what my mom said that was could be one of the questions what you're doing yeah what just did what exactly what you're doing oh no that that would oh. be the question for my nieces Oh, or maybe I can, they can tell me their daily routine. Ah, okay. Because, like, maybe sometimes it's, like, hard. And they, do they dig out of the trash cans? They do, right? Or that can be part of it. <laughs> no, uh, our family doesn't as far as we know. Oh, okay. Well, they, I, we can show them their daily routine, and, like, uh, they, like, get the small amount of food they need, and they, you know, kind of walk out and, like, look across the street and see if people are digging in the garbage. And just, you know. They can do like a little skit. The six year old love that. Very cute. <laughs> well, the the little one, the alien. 
Yeah. Was asking her mother the other day, Mom, are we poor now? So her mom asked why you are saying that. Because we used to eat uh, cookies and milk for uh, snacks, and why now we don't have it? Mm. So my sister in law was trying to explain why well, sometimes we don't have the money, but sometimes, even that we have the money, we go to the grocery store and we don't find them and the little one was continuing but tell me the truth mom i think we are poor now <laughs> tell me <what> yeah <laughs> so, yeah so that's the way that she understand what is happening is like a, she's poor now yeah. oh and the other day you know when you lose a tooth oh yeah okay uh, you have, uh, instead of the fairy, we have there a mouse that leaves the money for you. And she said, Mom, um, I know that the things are very difficult. When I get the money for, for my food, I'm going to give you the money and that so we can buy more food. So, yeah, that was probably if I give them money, we are going to be better. That was really cute. Yeah. Okay, we're actually going to have to close up in a little bit, so I'm going to... No! Uh, no! No! Why? You're out of time. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, That's what my mom said, so... Do you have, have any closing comments? Thing. comments? And then, if you have any closing comments... That we love you. She. That we love you, and we are very proud of you. And I feel so happy knowing That's what that now saying. you are happy in your new school and where you can do amazing things. God okay. is faithful. I think you need to start drinking coffee. I'm drink, I drink tea. I don't drink coffee. I hate coffee. Yeah. The president of the corporation is going to kill you if you drink <laughs> coffee because of you. I'm not drinking coffee ever. <laughs> Your boss won't let you. I hate it. I spit it out. <laughs> I'm just crazy with it. I love it. You know what? If you if you go to Venezuela and you drink their coffee, you're gonna love it. No, I'm not. Not chocolate. Chocolate. Mm. I don't like chocolate. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, you haven't tried. I like caramel. You're the alien. I like I I only like some chocolates. I like the the white the white one the white chocolate, mm -hmm. and then the the um I I hate dogs. Uh, and then uh, the right. milk chocolate. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're like my brother. <laughs> I, I, I hate dark chocolate. No offense. No. Okay. Well, next time that you come, I'm going to get a Venezuelan chocolate and you are going to see yeah. that you were mistaken. There's a caramel inside because I like milk chocolate, but it can't be plain. It has to be caramel. Oh, <laughs> no, I have like a <laughs> I'm almost busy. and not also. You bet I'm going to like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Well, uh, we never say never, Bella. I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna, also, I might be doing some GoFundMe for some fundraisers. So I'm gonna educate, but I'm also gonna, uh, uh, uh send money to, uh, people who have, uh, enough money for the medicine for the Venezuelans. But <laughs> I am interviewing some people so I can get some information. And my mom yeah. talk about you, and I was like, okay. And so. <laughs> We are doing this. Okay. Is it recording? Yeah. No, it's recording. Okay. So you can let her know that you're recording. And it yes. I'm recording, and parts of this, okay. parts of it will be on GoFundMe on my page. Okay. Uh, but just if it's just if you're okay with it, are you okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So but no guarantees you, that my dog's not going to jump in my lap while we record. <laughs> well, my mom's mom. My dog is just laying down over there. She's, she's like, <laughs> stop biting yourself. Why does she bite herself? Okay, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, what is poverty? Poverty. Did I say that right? Okay. 
So the way I see poverty and the way I guess I would define it in layman's terms, um, because I'm definitely not a scholar, but um, I would say lack of access to resources, resources, basic human needs, like lack of access to food, um, lack of access to um, health care and reliable shelter and transportation. Um, so when people don't have probably even just one of those things, um, you know, primarily it's looked at as a financial status, but I think it's a little bit more than that when you look at access to health care, transportation, and shelter, all when you look at it, all of it together. Why she gets a pen? Uh, I'll just ask the second question. So yes, um, access to healthcare. Wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So not being able to access food. Yeah, yeah. Or not having enough food, not having enough healthcare, like, not having a uh, reliable to place to live. What's that? Not having enough money to buy those things. Right, right. And sometimes it's not enough money. Sometimes it's not, um, it's, yeah, I mean, primarily one thinks of money, but sometimes it goes beyond that to where it's not, um, not enough opportunity or even access to get to the money that they might need for those things. Yeah. Some people don't get an education. Sometimes their their parents are poor, so then the kids are poor. And the kids, mm -hmm. they don't get an education. And then when they apply for a job, they don't get it. So then it's just a cycle. Yeah. Poor. It's a cycle, be yeah. It can be a cycle. In Venezuela, what's interesting, though, right now, is that the extreme amount of poverty um, is affecting people that weren't even born into poverty. So there were, you know, for years, there's been poverty in Venezuela, and poverty has existed, you know, for decades, but poverty has gotten so extreme and so bad that it's now um, affecting everyone, and not just those that have generational poverty, so to speak. Um, so people that do get an education and do get jobs are still not earning enough money for those basic human needs. Yeah, that's what's annoying because uh, I I think um, that I remember uh, I think uh, I think I've heard this phrase before. Uh, oh yeah, Nani, my grandma told me this. He just wants to be all powerful. He is not even letting trucks come in with eggs mm -hmm. and food. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard of the egg one, but I haven't. I, I think there's other ones, but you can mention into this one off on the news. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he wouldn't even let them come in to give mm -hmm. them food. Like, that's. Yeah. They traveled a long way. And yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's not. People think it's. Some people, some people think it's not his fault, but. I think if you have seen those stuff, it kind of is. He's not just taking all of the food and taking all of their needs. He's also not letting people. That's just a big. That's just wrong. Yeah, and not not allowing any opportunity for improvement. Not allowing any opportunity for any kind of relief. Yeah, I know that was one of the questions, or I don't know if one of your questions was. Um, about like kind of whose fault is it in yeah. Venezuela? Um, is it okay if we go to that one since it kind of naturally came up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. And, um, so, you know, poverty is an interesting debate when you talk about it in different places. Um, but in Venezuela, I would say, you know, for sure the the government there is responsible for so much of what has happened. Um, the government, you know, went from a democratic 
government. So it was a democracy um, up until, I guess, technically, I was let's see, in ninth or tenth grade. So that would have been 2001 or something like that. I can't remember the exact date. But it was a democracy. And then um, changed to a um, what was claiming to be a democracy. Um, and now is fully a socialist communist party. And so um, while socialism and some, in some concepts of socialism can help the poor, um, this way that this president or dictator, if you would like to call him, I, I mean, at this point, I think we all call him a dictator, yeah. the way he has taken over power, it's been a combination of a socialist and communist government combined with extreme greed and um, really reckless behavior. And so I think in this instance, when it's when we're talking about Venezuela, absolutely, the government is, is a major, major factor in why poverty has happened. And why it's gotten worse and worse and worse. So, I think that this, I actually never told anyone this, but since, you, uh, since you're talking about all this, and I, I think that was a good answer. But, in my opinion, I think it's everyone's fault. That sounds really weird in some ways. But yeah, no, but I, I get it. Because they, he is... He's, yes, he's a dictator. He's technically also a president. What you have to vote for a president. They voted for that president. But yes, I understand it is really hard uh, because, yeah. you know, I, I've heard of uh, the some of the, the jobs, I think, uh, that people had. Uh, their boss told them uh, either vote for Nicolas Maduro or vote mm -hmm. or, or not vote for him. But if you don't vote for mm -hmm. him, we will fire you. Right. But they chose right. to vote for Nicolas Maduro and right. instead of actually. Um, right. So I think it's not technically is they, they, they it's because if they vote for him, they mm -hmm. have a chance of because everybody, if they're if everybody was put in that position, m most people are gonna choose that. I mean, if I had a family and kids, mm -hmm. I would vote for it. I'm not lying. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. But then when you I think mean, about it, yeah, that either way you're gonna be poor. But the other way, voting Nicholas Maduro, you're gonna be poor, and everybody else is gonna be. Poor. Yeah. This way. Well, and what has happened in Venezuela that's um, really unfortunate and has led to the people not being able to get out of the cycle of having Nicolas Maduro as the um, um, dictator is that elections have not been fair. And, um, and so there are allegations, of course, I... Uh, thus far believe the allegations that the elections are not quite fair and they're not um, uh, normal elections um, where the votes are fair and where people are um, people's votes are counted fairly um, so in that respect I think it's really put some more of the blame on the government if you can't even have a fair election you know, if people don't even have a voice to be able to say who they actually want to vote for, because one, they may not even vote because they're so afraid um, that they're afraid of how they might vote, or two, they could vote, but it may not even matter if the elections aren't fair. So that, I think that's also part of the, the factor. Um, so yeah, interesting discussion. I love the way you're thinking. Yeah. You think you're thinking very broad about it all. Oh yeah, okay. So we just wait. I want to do something. And I'll 
also you have to wonder, Bella, and I, I am not a politician and I don't have much, you know, I'm totally naive when it comes to politics. Um, I'm definitely stronger when it comes to medicine and healthcare. <laughs> but um, you do have to wonder, um, not just Nicolas Maduro is being responsible, but who are the people that are around him? Yeah. And who are the people that are high up in power that are allowing him to continue on? And so, you know, we say, yeah, Nicolas Maduro, because he's in charge of everything, and he's the dictator, and he's, well, the president, as he would call himself. But but really, there's a lot of people in power that are high up in the government that are also um, going along with it because they are um, gaining a lot of wealth through this whole situation. So with bribes and corruption yeah, and all kinds of other things. If you, What's that? They think, yeah, they, they're getting all the wealth. Sure. Cool. Look around you. I mean, Nicholas, right. at least I haven't seen this, but uh, Nani, my grandma, uh, told me that there was uh, his Christmas picture was him with his dog, fat. He, he everybody else is like just tiny, yeah. dying, mm -hmm. and he's just sitting there and like, you know, kind of like chilling, and his dog is fat too, it's not. Mm. Yeah, dog. it's pretty frustrating. It's, it's just sad. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. Yeah, since we've been talking about, you know, what is property and all that stuff, I mean, how, how do people become poor? So I think there's several different ways. That's a good question. Um, I think one way that you already described is the cycle of poverty where some people are just, yeah. and I see that, you know, in the United States um, and some, some of the clients that I work with, some of my patients are born, I know this is not related to Venezuela, but to kind of give you um, compare and contrast of poverty is, you know, some people are born into poverty and never get the opportunity, the education, um, to, or the jobs to get out of poverty. So it's this constant battle of kind of like swimming upstream. They were born poor, their parents were poor, they couldn't afford an education, so they were working, you know, very low-income jobs, trying to survive and trying to pay for things just they're always behind, so to speak. Like, you know, the check that I get now is going to pay for next month's supplies of food and shelter and all those things. Um, or, I'm sorry, the previous months. And so I think some people are, you know, born into this cycle and are given the opportunity to get out to have a better education or to find, to study really hard and get a better job or, you know, pursue those opportunities. In Venezuela, so many people are, I mean, nowadays everyone's born into poverty in Venezuela. Um, what was your question? How do people get out of poverty? How do people, like, I lost my opposite, dream. opposite, how do people become poor? Not get out of it. What's that? Sorry. So, so you said, um, how do people... Get out of poverty. That will be the next question. The question we are at now. Okay. How do people become poor? Become poor. Um, so, for some people, like I said, they're born into poverty, and it's a cycle of poverty, um, like you described earlier. For other people, I would say this is probably a smaller percentage, and I don't know the percentages they can make. Um, certain choices or pursue certain things that m eventually make them poor. Um, an example would be someone that spends their money frivolously um, on a lifestyle that they can't maintain and spending money on things that are not important and slowly over time becoming poor. Um, and I think some people become poor through major life events. So you could be perfectly fine and go through um, 
an event like even having cancer or getting into a car crash could deplete all of your funds and all of your reserves financially, and you could become poor through a major life event, um, like if you become disabled um, through something and something with your going on with your health, and you're disabled and you can't work anymore, um, and then you're depending on other people to support you. Um, and then other ways that are more complicated that I am smart enough to explain is you could become poor simply by existing in a government who changes the currency and changes the inflation rate. So Lance, my husband, is he's the economist in the family, and he's not available right now, but he'd be really good to explain this. But So to give you an example... Let's say a teacher in Venezuela makes, we'll just make up a number, makes $100 a week teaching and has made $100 a week, you know, and making a decent living, which that's not, that's a hypothetical number. And they have enough money for food and for shelter and for all those things. But if the government manages, mismanages their money and their economy, they have inflation or what's called hyperinflation. That $100 is no longer worth $100, and it could be worth $20. So the bolivares that they make are worth a lot less. So then they work all week, and they make their bolivares, and what used to be worth $100 is now only worth $20. And in Venezuela, what's happened really quickly in the past um, you know, several years has been extreme hyperinflation. So people that used to make $100 now make 20, now make 10, now make five, now make three, now make pennies. And so they are professional. They went to college, they had educations, and they even have good jobs, but their money's not worth anything. So that's kind of one of the major ways that Venezuelans are, you know, by default just poor because their money is not worth anything. Does that make sense? It's kind of over my head. <laughs> I mean, that that actually does make sense. If they change, you know. But why would you change the money less? Because that's just wasted material. Yeah, so the government... Oh, I need to think back on what my what Lance explained to me. Yes, <laughs> I'm so bad at the economics. Um, but it has to do with the value of the currency and what the economy, the Venezuelan economy, holds to be the value of the Bolivar. So, um, and it also has to do with international markets and the oil industry. Um, but we can ask him in a second if you want. When he comes back in here, we'll ask him, why would the government, because like, that's a great question. The, the other thing that happens with hyperinflation that also I have a hard time comprehending, but Nicolas Maduro has said, okay, everyone doesn't have enough money and there's not enough money in the economy, so let's just make more paper money. So he goes and he they've printed more paper money. But what ends up happening is that makes the paper money less valuable. So it would be like saying, okay, we're just going to make all this, all this paper money and we're going to put this money into the economy, this, like the actual physical money. The printing money doesn't mean that money is more valuable. So, um, so that's, and then he's also done some other things like he's, um, limited access to U.S. dollars, and he's, I mean, there's there's a list of very bad financial and economical choices he's made, which have caused Venezuelans to result in poverty, even though they've not um, done very much to be in poverty. They worked, so a lot of Venezuelans have worked extremely hard to be out of poverty, but they still can't climb out of it. <laughs> yeah, that, you, I'm pretty sure I said this every single time I interviewed, but it's true, I have 
people. I, I think I'm. My mom had good choices. <laughs> and, uh. Well, I mean, I chose not eat, though. But you chose not to. But, I mean, you ordered that perfectly. I say that every time. But it's true. And, like. Uh. That was good. Okay, anyways. <laughs> I'm tired. I keep having brain parts and I just forget what I want to say. Well, I cannot read that. What led up to Venezuelans not being able to eat? Wait, hold on a second. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's going to blow her nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she has dust mite allergies. It's kind of bad today. Okay, come on back. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> We're going through springtime um, pollen here for oh. like your car is covered in pollen. And oh, yeah. Uh, is my nose red? No, you're fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was getting a cold for a second. Okay. What led up to the Venezuelans not being able to eat? So I think it was a combination of things. For it was almost like the perfect storm. Um, the government was becoming more and more corrupt and um, much more inefficient. Because of it being a socialist and communist government, they took over a lot of the food industry. Oh. Hi, I'm Bella. <laughs> no, no, you're already on there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I already went there. Sorry, this is our second one. People who are watching, um, we just started the recording, so I just don't get confused. You look really good right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, Just yes. What led up to the Venezuelans not being able to eat? So, basically, an economic collapse um, from a terrible um, mismanagement of resources by Nicolas Maduro and his regime. So, they um, have been in power for a while, and hyperinflation got worse. Food production got extremely low. Imports and exports also were kind of coming to a halt because people didn't want to do business in Venezuela anymore. Um, and what food was there, because the government took over the food industry, they, the production quality got way worse. So the government was producing the food and supplying the grocery stores with the food, but there wasn't enough. So it was like a food shortage. And what was available then, because there was such little food, became extremely, extremely expensive. So people would spend one month's wage of all their income on, you know, one bag of rice or one pound of chicken or something like that. So in a nutshell, economic collapse, but also um, the socialist government was responsible for a decrease in production of food and decrease import export people's wages and their money was worth so little and the food was so expensive that's the fastest answer i think i can give you yeah i mean that, that was good fast answer uh but okay yeah. so six fourth question uh what did the president do what did he do? What did he do? And so he controlled. Um, he controls a lot of the industries in Venezuela. Um, he controls um, food rationing and food portions. In controls the food industry. Controls the oil industry. Um, and did really, really bad, terrible business, um, was not a good business person, not a good financial person. Um, so, and then he also prevented um, re relief and aid from coming in. So there were other countries that said, hey, we have food, we have medicine, we can bring these things in and start helping. And he did not allow that. Um, so not only did he kind of caused the private industries he, that he took over um, to crumble and kind of collapse, but he also 
um, to not allow others to come in and help. Yeah, I mean, it's already bad enough to, like, take all the food from them, but it's even worse to not even let people give the poor people. Is that even allowed? Can you, like, stop the... Is he even allowed to do that? Stop aid from coming in? Yeah. Um... I mean, I guess technically, if you're a dictator um, and you have the kind of government that he runs, he—I don't know if it's un, if it's unconstitutional or not. I don't. I honestly don't know. But I would assume that it's unconstitutional to deny people um, those basic resources. But I'm not sure because I'm not familiar with the Venezuelan constitution. Yeah. So. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, the biggest part about this, the, one of the big reasons I did this was because he's not letting bring the food. I just I think that's so bad. I keep saying mm -hmm. it, but I, I just, I think it's really bad. I do. Yeah. And not only, you know, there's one scenario recently where food was trying to get in the country, relief truck with food and medicine not only was it not allowed to be in but it was set on fire by people that worked for maduro's government so not only was it like you can't bring it in but we're gonna burn it to the ground and at that point i think that was a big turning point for venezuelans um i mean there have been several moments that have kind of been turning points in the past few months but that was a big one for people to see okay there's some little glimmer of hope that other countries would help us and then when the food truck and when the trucks got there they set them on fire so um government people set them on fire is what is what Are i have they read supposed to help the venezuelans like that's not that's dumb it's really dumb what they're doing. It's yeah, it's terrible, no and it's, there's a lot of, they're, like, too proud to accept help, and so there's a lot of greed, a lot of pride, a lot of control. He just wants to be all powerful. I just said that wrong. Powerful. Mm -hmm. My tongue's getting tired. Okay. Uh, next question. So, how can how can we help people get out of poverty, especially Venezuelans? Because you know, yeah, this is so. It's um, this is a a tricky one. There are several ways that we can get involved. Um, I think there's two ways that come to mind right off the bat. One is. Um, contacting politicians in the U.S. or in other countries that are working towards helping Venezuela establish a democratic government. Um, so some political activism, I think, is one way that um, an awareness, because some people still really don't even know what's going on in Venezuela. Um, so I think awareness and political activism, and then there's kind of more boots on the ground, just practical things like collecting money and food and, and trying to get it there. As of right now, there are still ways to get boxes of food and shipments in the country. But every week and every month, everyone's kind of just going, okay, is this, uh, is this, is it going to stop this week? You know, is it going to still be able to get there? And so, as of as of this week, exactly, packages still can make it in um, through private companies that um, do send things on ships. Um, they ship things from Florida and Miami to Venezuela and can deliver it to people that you send it to. So, kind of like that's where I'm going to send my money. To do. Yeah, because yeah, the, the sh yeah. Why do they only allow... I thought so. What? Whoa. <laughs> that was Siri. I'm very sorry. 
And then, that's oh, Yasuo. another, in, oh, go ahead. That, that's who I'm sending to, that's all I was going to say, but, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, but why do they only have, why do they only want shipments and not people, other people? It's, you know, I, um, well, partially because these shipments are not labeled as aid. So to give you an example, um, there's a location, there's some people I know that send regular shipments of food, but they actually hide the food and have to hide the food underneath things that don't look like food. So they may cover the top of the box with other things and then close the box so that if, if people from the government open it up, they don't realize, oh, there's food in here, oh, there's whatever. And so yeah. these private companies are doing the best they can to get these shipments to people, but they're not, they're not advertised as not aid. Um, you know, it's not human relief work. It's just, I'm sending a package from my house to your house kind of a deal. If the government knew how much aid was going through there, it probably would be, um, you know, would not continue. And so it's done kind of very carefully and very cautiously and always knowing that there's a risk that it, the package may not even make it in. That's just, that's yeah. sad. I was going to say, you know, another way that Venezuelans, that, that we can help Venezuelans out of poverty, um, at least one way that I've seen in the United States is by receiving and accepting Venezuelan immigrants into our communities and into our homes. Um, some Venezuelans, their only hope of having any kind of relief from this extreme poverty is to flee their country. And so um, one thing that we, that we all can do is when Venezuelans do flee their country, and go somewhere else to find um, a better life and better opportunities and a better government and a better um, job, et cetera, they, that we can come alongside them and support them and help them with those, you know, help them get settled and help them get um, stable when they're in a new place. Yeah, but the thing is, the people that are in Venezuela, sometimes they can't leave. Because their yeah. grandma can't walk. Yeah, you're exactly right. And sometimes and so, the family splits in half. Some yeah. grandma, some go grandma, grandpa. No yeah. One, mostly. One thing that, that people say in Venezuela, um, one thing that is really common now, is that Venezuela is becoming a country of really older individuals and really young like children and elderly because people that are in their middle age or in their 20s or 30s 40s 50s that are healthy and still have the capacity to work they leave the country and so the ones that are left behind are the disabled the sick the elderly and the children um so even more reason to why it's so important to get food and packages in um because they some people Depend a hundred percent on those. Yeah. And, okay. So, are you doing anything now with Venezuelans? I am. I do. Um, doing it that. is. I don't run an official organization. And I'm not a nonprofit. I'm just yeah. an individual trying to help other individuals. And so, what I have done is I've created a Facebook group. And through the Facebook group, I invite family, friends, and other people in this in East Tennessee. And there's some people that are from all over, but um, in this group, I have created ways to just say, "Hey, this is these are easy ways that you can help." And there's primarily two things that I do through that group. I collect 
Um, it's kind of like an ongoing formula and food drive at my house. So in my dining room, I collect all kinds of personal hygiene, deodorant, toothpaste, rice, beans, um, baby formula, um, pretty much the the basic foods, um, dried dried uh, foods, not liquids. But I collect those on an ongoing basis, um, and I deliver. I kind of do 50-50. I send 50% of what I get to an organization in a town nearby in Lenore City, and they have they support a, a soup kitchen at a church in a town called Cabimas, Venezuela. And this soup kitchen depends 100% on the shipments from Tennessee. And so I, I collect food and formula and send it, and I drive it to Lenore City about once a month, and they send big shipments, like pallets of, of big shipments of food. The other way that I help is I send individual boxes um, about once or twice a month to a specific family in Venezuela. And they, um, so far, they've received my packages. And every month, we just kind of hope for the best and hope that it makes it. We do a lot of praying that the boxes make it there safely. Um, so this family uses what they need, and then they share what whatever's left over so they share for example i sent a big um a big package of multiple soap bars and they you know they kept some for themselves and they distributed soap among those that needed soap um and their family and extended family so those are kind of two ways oh i guess there's a third way the third way lance and i help is there's a family in venezuela that's um retired they're elderly and they live on their retirement income, which is not very much, um, not enough to buy them food or shelter or anything. So Lance and I send them money every month. We have a we made a commitment with them that we would send them a certain amount of money every single month for as long as we can. And so one of it is just, you know, the third option is just basically sponsoring a family so that they can survive. So we send them money so there's different ways money is is good for some things but also when food is so expensive the money may not help buy them the food so sometimes it's more practical and better for, for some families to receive the food so it just kind of depends what their greatest needs are so far people have been asking for shipments rather than money except this one family <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you. So how do you switch from your money to that money? Yeah, so I have a person, a contact. Uh, your mom actually knows him, probably. And I, um, he has a U.S. bank account. So he has a bank account in the United States. He's a business person. And he owns a business. And so I send money, and it's actually incredibly easy to do. I have an app on my phone for my bank, and I send him the money to his bank. And then that businessman, he um, gives the dollar amount. He does the exchange to the Venezuelan Bolivar and puts it in their bank account in Venezuela. So it's a transaction of I'm sending this. There's a middleman. So the middleman receives my money, and he, from his business, then gives them bolivares. Yeah. Wait, what's the the, the, the group called or the on Facebook that she does? On Facebook? Yeah. I, um, I call it Venezuela Aid, a Facebook community. I'm on there. And actually, I created that group a while back, but there's now a, an actual nonprofit called Venezuela Aid. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a fundraiser recently, and so people kept confusing the two. And so I may have to rename it just to not be confused with a legitimate nonprofit that was created more recently. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, it's Venezuela Aid. Any more questions?
questions? Do you have anything else to say? Um, no, I am well, really excited watching. about this. What's that? There's the other people watching that's on the GoFundMe page that's probably watching this. Okay. Um, so I would love for people that see this to know um, that there are some practical ways just from a click from your phone. Um, it's so easy to send donations um, to our cause. Um, the world, we're so connected through media and through phones and um, through apps that it really is like two clicks away to send a donation to arrive at my house to where I can send it in a box. So any kind of donations are welcome. I have an Amazon wish list so people can see exactly what we send. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I want people to know that, um, that all of us need to contribute and need to help um, Venezuelans. The, the degree of poverty they're experiencing is like never, like they've never experienced before. Um, and so it would be wonderful for people all over the world to be able to say, hey, we care about you and we're going to make a donation. We're going to send some food. But we're also going to stand with you um, with activism and awareness. Yeah. I think what she said. People, what she said. Um, anyways, uh, I want to say thank you to you for doing this. And, uh, I mean, if you guys haven't seen the GoFundMe, you haven't clicked on the thing. I have, the, I don't know anything about GoFundMe. I haven't, well, actually, we've started it. I just don't know. Well, just go, go send donations. Tell them you care. We, we don't, like, care how much money. We don't care if it's like a penny. But, like, show you care by doing it. I'm trying to make a model here, but it's not right here. Um, <laughs> and thank you for sending, or thank you for watching this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Christy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, my mom will take it from here. Here, I'll stop okay. recording and I'll just say goodbye. <laughs> Hi, thank you for watching. And, uh, this whole video is dedicated to the Venezuelans. I just wanted to say that also, um, I wanted to say thank you from me and my Girl Scout troop, and thank you for watching this video. Bye.